Elisha Shaw, graduate assistant at Missouri Valley College. I think it's something colorful. I think it's something everybody wants to be in a position of power, but I don't think everyone understands what it takes to be a coach. I believe um, a lot of people see the X's and O's in coaching versus the developmental phases you go through to develop a young man as he transitions throughout life. Responsibility is one, you gotta figure out what you're dealing with. You're gonna guide through some different adversities through the game and different adversities throughout life because you got a young man for four years. So you gotta one, know where your kid is, know where your student athlete is mentally, physically, all right? And then after that, you then you got to apply whatever your team philosophy is, apply different things like that and just figure out what's this kid learning capacity? Well, how much can he take? How much could you give him and he can obtain and apply? So one, you gotta really study your student athlete then you gotta have a successful plan to align him in for success. What I speak a lot is pretty much private association. Why I speak private association? Because 10 times out of 10, you're gonna rub, you're gonna get rubbed off on. You're gonna be influenced through whatever, whatever your environment is. So with being at the University of Alabama, I was around a lot of alpha males, a lot of guys, a lot of overachievers. They definitely rubbed off on me. I seen a process turn into a return on investment. I bought into that process. It's a process I like to use because I like the return on investment that I received while I was in my process. You get young men at different mental phases in their life. So if you're in, if you're a college coach, you're gonna have to adhere to those you know young adult off the field issues, right? The mental trying to develop as the physical is going through so many different requirements from just being a college athlete. All right, so it's one of those things where your student athlete is only going to respond based off of your investment that you pour into that student athlete. Now, if you need all of your student athletes focus, effort, and great character, right, you got to pour into that student athlete because you got to remember now, you're holding him accountable to a, a pretty demanding schedule daily, all right? Now, so if you're gonna hold him to a demanding schedule, when it comes down to a kid, you know, having family issues, a kid feeling like he's at that peak of as much as he can take, all right, then that's when you gotta come in and you gotta put fires out. So you gotta care, you gotta be invested. You can't fake be a football coach because now you have young men who can see through the X's and O's. As plays go on, as games go on in football season, real life don't stop. So you don't want your player to stop, so you got to be able to put out fires, you got to be able to influence good character, you got to be able to influence clear thought processes. So that takes you caring, it takes you caring. I get a recruit, he's fresh, he's a freshman, he's coming into, he's getting ready to pack up his things and come to Marshall, alright? Love his family up, I actually kind of knew his family past football, alright? I get him in town get him in the dorm, he's in camp, he's going through camp, last day of camp, this kid is excited, got his new cleats for the first game, he's excited, he made friends on the team, and then I get a call at the last team meeting, that's when it got real as a coach. So I had to pretty much go to my student athlete who had no idea what kind of storm was coming his way. I got that kid, I took him somewhere alone, me and the head coach, and, and some more of the coaches that are relate to this kid, and I had to break down, hey, your mother just passed. This kid didn't know what kind of emotions to share, right? Now you have come to find everyone have their, everyone have their way of expressing themselves. There's not one wrong way in coping, makes sense? And with this student athlete, I had to let him know, hey, we're here for you and whatever you need, but do not feel like you can't cope in any way because you're in front of us. So sometimes, all right, you're gonna have to be four walls to a student athlete. When I say four walls, you're going to have to let him know it's safe. Be you to the most purest form. All right. So that's one of the situations in which I had to tell a student athlete, your mother left you. And I had to let him know, you know, we're still going to gear up for this game. Good job. Good job. Had a baby. Had a, who got that backside? Hey, coach. But it was a point in time in my life where I couldn't look football in the eye, right? So at that point in time in life, I had to find another field where I can do what I naturally do, and that's compete. I started to become networking, become friends with people outside of football who were still successful, 
right? I used football to travel to success. Football dropped me off in a pretty dang good alignment, all right? I was aligned for success. So now at this point, which I want to be around more people with like-minded people who wasn't all X's and O's. They may have liked football. That may have been my interest, my interest into the relationship with them. Hey, that's a football guy. But their interest into the relationship with me is, hey, that's another successful guy. He get it. So at that point, I pretty much had to pick up all of those skill sets I developed through trying to be the biggest, fastest, strongest kid on the football field and taking it to real life. And when I want to be the hardest worker in the room, get up before the sun, those kind of skill sets, those kind of um, investment, give you good relationships with pretty dang good people, all right, who have shared like minds as you and they're going pretty much, they're projecting to the same place as you. I picked up those things that, that I used in football to be pretty good and I put it in another area. I gravitated to people who was very successful and that kind of helped me out. Now how I grew into a coach was I hung around coaches. I was always around coaches, you know, that's how it started. You know, you pretty much are who you hang around, and, that, and that's pretty dang true. All right, I hung around coaches. I was a 17, 18 year old young young guy, ex athlete, hanging around coaches who's doing who 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 do really dang good at what they do. All right, so that right there stimulated something in me, and how it, it pretty much made me feel safe to go back around football. Okay, so I didn't want to enter football one dimensional. I wanted to enter. I wanted to enter the coaching realm with football with the right mindset to continue on to grow and help people get to and get to where I went and to be able to see what I saw and help a lot of them become the first in their family to be, be, be an educated man. You're getting a lot of young, not all the way developed athletes who feel that they're coming from leaving home for you. I think that's something you gotta take care of, right? Um, you think about it, right? You got a lot of great coaches. There are not great coaches without great players. I stand behind that, you know? That's why I love my guys up, right? Just like there's not a lot of entertainers having success without fans. There's a progression to everything. And this is how I feel. This is my coaching philosophy. You take care of people who happily, who's happily to take care of you. If I got a kid who wanna show up every day on time, all right, maybe miss, maybe miss a birth, mom's birthday, maybe miss girlfriend's birthday, just because of the team goals, I'm gonna hear that kid's problem. I'm gonna work that kid problem. If he need to go home, we're gonna get that kid home. All right, we're gonna always have an open door, open here and open heart and open kitchen for some. So those are the things you gotta be willing to do. You get a plant from the store, you can't plant it and not water it, not position it for the sun to grow. So those are something that gotta be embedded, in the, it, that gotta be deep inside you. If that's not deep inside you as a coach, you're in the wrong industry. I'm passionate about what I do because I care about what I'm doing. <laughs> I care about what I'm doing. And, and that's one of the things where this not work to me. I have fun with this. It's like going to play pick up basketball. You know, I love I love what I do because you see humans transition. Once I broke my neck playing football, it wasn't about the money. You're gonna spend more years outside of football than you're gonna spend in it. I know that because I live that. So I'm preparing these kids for an even bigger game. So it's a, it's a double whammy. And if a coach is not thinking like that, acting like that, working like that, all right, you're doing a kid a disjustice. The best investment is investing into new life never know what you're investing into. Maybe the new president, maybe the next doctor, film writer. It ain't just all about ball. You're creating successful tools for this universe. And, and, and that's what I care about because that's the Super Bowl. That's the SEC championship, right? That right there is a cycle that don't lose. Yeah, that's my philosophy and, and, and I stick behind that and, and that's what make me fired up. I get fired up about that. My name is Tamika Drake. I am the head women's volleyball coach here at Missouri Valley College as well as director of volleyball operations. I have had great coaches and I've had okay coaches. And uh, I say okay because they may not have been my favorite or you know, you may not like their style, but they pushed you to be the best person that you can be. You know, when I get, went to Ohio State, just the coach that gave me the opportunity. And I think that's really what started my drive and love of the the sport as a coach. Um, you know, I, he gave me the opportunity, you know, as far as I wasn't recruited by him, 
but he allowed the opportunity for me to try out for the team and actually I earned it. Being a, a part of something bigger than self, that's what really drives me. Um, and so he giving me the opportunity is what truly I try to do and still here at Missouri Valley College, providing the opportunity to be a college student athlete. Um, it doesn't matter what division or NCAA, NAIA, JUCO, if you're given the opportunity, then you want to be the best that you can be. Um, I also had a coach, that a club coach when I was in high school. Uh, he told me I would never play in college. And you better believe every day I walk into this gym, that's my motivation to prove him wrong. You know, when I made the uh, team at Ohio State, I made sure I reached out to him and said, hey, did you, did you by chance see this? Did you hear about this? But that, I don't remember, I don't, I will never forget that day, that conversation. That's truly my motivation to wanting, to always striving to be better. I started coaching right out of college. So as soon as I graduated, I started coaching at the club level. So as a coach, um, transitioning from a player to a coach, learning the hows and whys, not just going to do, that's the biggest challenge. Um, and then also knowing that you know, you want to find that connection and that relationship and trust of your players. Sometimes that's a challenge, especially at the college level. You have to remember that that's, there's a fine line that you can't cross because you want them to respect you, but also you have to discipline and hold them to a higher standard as a coach. Until you are a coach, I don't think anyone can understand what we actually do on a daily basis. You know, people think coaching is just on the court, uh, the X's and O's, or drawing up plays, or putting a lineup in, or you know, just teaching someone how to pass, set, and hit it over the net. But it's m so much more. So we are the organizer. We are making the schedule, practices and games, transportation, the video. We are counselors. When there's tough times at home, or here in school, or in between, you know, between teammates. And so we, we to. also have to give the tough love sometimes, but also be that shoulder to lean on, or ear that's willing to listen. Um, you know, and I often tell the girls, I can be Coach T, and I can be Tamika. I think that's why I have the good relationship with my athletes um, today and of past, uh, because I can separate, I can, I can respond differently. I think anyone knows the life of a coach. You are molding the next generation. We as coaches most times see that student athlete more than parents, family, and so you spend so much time with them, you are actually the example that they are going to be remembering for life. I think being a mentor, being a role model is a huge part of my job, my responsibility. Life is what we are teaching, life lessons. It's bigger than volleyball. And so it is something important that I take seriously. The ladies have to learn discipline, have to learn right versus wrong, choice and consequence, how to make those you know, critical thinking skills. I think it is important for us as coaches to be role models because these young ladies and gentlemen are gonna need reference letters. You know, we are kind of the adult example of what they're gonna be forming their livelihood or their thought processes based off of how we handle situations. And if they see calm, control, aggressive, you know, in different situations, they learn how to be and manage themselves. And that's why I think coaches have a big, a pivotal um, impact on someone's life. You build that connection and that trust and that bond, and it's okay to have that someone to go talk to. I think you, everyone needs that someone that they trust and they can go talk to and lean on for help. I have gone over and above the role of coach, and I have no problem in doing that. You know, sometimes they just need to vent and just yell and scream or fuss or speak openly to get their emotions out. I know it's not personal. I just have to be that person and then remind them why they are here. I think we all have to know our why of why we are doing whatever we're doing, whether that's being a college student athlete, being a college student, and why are you here? You know, some people start getting to funks. We all get into funks where you don't want to go to class or you don't want to go to work. That's not going to help you with your why. You're not going to graduate if you don't go to class. 
Um, and so it is important for the coach, myself, I can only speak for myself, but I, it, I have been more than a coach and I have no problem in doing that. I think that is a big, the biggest part of my job of being a mentor, a role model, and being that person for my student athletes in whatever shape that may be because it is different. For Okay, my name is Greg Purdom. I'm the head uh, varsity reserve coach and work with the offensive line. With the varsity, I work with the running backs. Uh, that and running summer camps is my main job along with recruiting. I, I don't think people know what's involved in coaching and to be a coach. You know, they, uh, they I, I've always told young coaches, remember how people look at you and how you're put up on a pedestal. Uh, you have a lot more effect on your players a lot of times than their parents do. So you want to make sure you're a good example in every aspect. Represent strongly, but uh, I don't think people really understand what all is involved in the coaching aspect because what they see is out on the field. And what's on the field is the easy part, the fun part. Everything else that's off the field, in here, all the work being put in, you know, all those type of things you got to deal with. You know, and, and being a head coach is not for everybody because, you know, they, a lot of guys don't want to do that. I know when I became the head coach athletic director here, I had a bunch of colleagues going, hey, now it's perfect to be able to get into administration. You need to get into your administration so the rest of your career. And I go, no, I don't because I want to coach football and have done that my whole career. That's what I wanted to do. And as my mom has always said, she reminded me, you know, it's that time of year for you to go play with your boys. That's what you love doing. That's exactly right. I graduated college in 1977 and started coaching high school. Ken Gibbler called me and asked me to come put in a strength program, coach the offensive line. Coach to give me a call like that, I couldn't get back up here fast enough. So 10 years after I graduated, I was back here coaching uh, for four years, held that position. He passed away, chose me to succeed him. I was a head coach athletic director for the next five. Um, left, went to Florida for a couple of years, then went to Central Methodist University as a head coach for three years. Got out of college then and went to high school and retired after 17 years of high school. This is my fourth year to be back in Missouri Valley. It's, it's just, it's different, you know, the, the number of lives that a coach reaches, you know, the, the life changing decisions you help guys with. You know, I could go story after story about guys here. One went in the Hall of Fame this year, who after we got beat second round of the national playoffs, he walked into the office, Coach Gibbler was homesick. He says, I've got to quit. And I go, no, no, no. First team all conference, offensive tackle. He's 6'4", 3'10", was a great athlete. I said, no, we can't have that. And he goes, she's pregnant, we're gonna have a baby. And I said, well, let's think long term. You know, let's not think about the problem today. Let's think long term. And once you guys get married, I'll get you married student housing, and we can that way you can take care of your your family on down the line. So he stayed around for and he graduated, stayed around, was on staff with me my first year as head coach, and he said, "Well, coach, I'm going to graduate, but what do I need a degree in?" And I said, "Well, you've already got one in teaching and physical education. If you can get one in special education, you'll never have to look for a job." So that's what he did. He got certified in that. Um, his wife graduated. They left. Um, I made a call to a friend in Oklahoma. Got his first job down there. The guy says, superintendent says, I need an offensive line coach and I need to make a presence when he walks in. And after the interview, he called me. He says, I'm standing at my, or sitting at my desk. And all of a sudden, my room got dark. And I look up, and it's this candidate that's standing in the doorway, filled up the door. And so anyway, he comes back to Kansas City and uh, was getting ready to retire from there. His wife is an administrator in the large school district over there. So, you know, they've been able to provide and have outstanding lives and careers and everything. So, you know, have guys come in and say, well, I'm, I'm hurt my knee and I'm, I'm not coming back. I said, yeah, you are. You can come back and work with me and get healthy, get well, place the next year, so forth. I talked to a guy that's coming in for our recruit day. He made, called me the other night and he says, my dad said that, uh, you might have coached my uncle. And I said, who's your uncle? And he told me, and I said, coached him. 
I said, I coached him, Coach Gibbler coached him. He was the first guy I hired when I took the job at Central Methodist. He calls me every two weeks. He's coached, he's a very successful coach down in San Antonio. I mean, this, this, this young kid's pumped to get up here and uh, just because of that tie-in right there. So when you're open, honest, and respectful, and you get that back from them, that bond and just gets that much tighter. You know, Valley One changed my life. Valley's, uh, I feel, my home. I, uh, I was telling Coach Stroth, telling Coach Pfeiffer, the athletic director, um, I met with him and the president a couple of years before I retired, and I kept telling all of them, I've been retired two years, don't want to come home, and I want a job. And they go, so what do you see yourself doing? See yourself teaching? I said, no. I see myself coaching football and recruiting. So that's what I do. You know, I'm very, very fortunate. Very fortunate. I gave this to the young GAs. I tell them this. Um, anytime somebody asks me to write a letter of recommendation for them, I include these three things. And I, I feel like I've always made it a part of me and what I intend to do. And I think those three words to live by are one, initiative level. Do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it and get it done. Don't wait on